Hey everyone. Hope you can hear me okay. I have the camera kind of far back so that you can see my counter. Apparently the double stacked counter thing is not great for kitchen videos. Anyway, this video is more or less for my mother. <laughs> I think I've uh, gone over how to make bone broth quite a few times with her. And also a lot of people just don't know this stuff. Um, and it kills me to think that all of this super potentially nutritious food is just being thrown in the trash. So I'm gonna give you like the down and dirty, how I do this kind of version. It's, it's not stuffy, it's not fancy, there's nothing crazy culinary about this, okay? It's literally saving scraps and what would normally be trash and freezing it and then saving it for later and turning it into very valuable, nutritious bone broth, okay? So, step one is you're gonna need bones. Now there's like bones and broth and stock are like two different things, but like this is kind of a combination of both. It's a, a hybrid version. Um, broth is made with just bones. Stock is made with bones and meat together. Um, and you'll see the bones I use, that have a little bit of meat left on them. I don't go crazy like picking all of the meat off of them. It adds flavor. It adds some you know nutrition and vitamins and minerals and whatever. So I don't go crazy over it. What I do is every time I have like a rotisserie chicken or Thanksgiving dinner, turkey, I'm making turkey bone broth today actually, because we had turkey for Easter. <laughs> Shocker, right? Um, it's one of the turkeys that we raised. So I obviously want to try to utilize every single bit of its, you know, existence. I raised these things. I want, you know, to have no waste. And just in general, even if it's our store-bought rotisserie chicken, I try to use as much as I can of what I purchase. So anyway, you need bones. You can do this with chicken. You can do this with turkey. You can do this with beef if you have beef bones. Um, I make chicken stock a lot, chicken broth, whatever, and I use it interchangeably. Um, and it's just, like I said, a matter of saving the carcass, um, the leftover bones, whatever little scrap meat you have, and stick it in the freezer usually. Um, usually a rotisserie chicken or two isn't going to be enough bones or leftovers for you to make an entire batch of, of stock. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of start stashing them away in a food saver bag like this and I will keep like a running bag in the freezer or put them in like a little Ziploc, you know, container, Rubbermaid type of container and just stick it in the freezer and every time I have chicken wings or um, our, like I said, a rotisserie chicken, a roast turkey. Anytime I have leftover bones, I stick them in the freezer and I store them away and I save them from the trash. And then, you know, when I have a good amount, I'll do like one big bone broth day or one big stock day. And even I though I say big day, it's like literally putting stuff in an instant pot and like walking away. So bones, okay, save your bones, dump them away. There's so much nutrition in the marrow and in the and minerals and nutrients and all that stuff. Like, um, I'm sure you've heard bone broth is really good for like healing your gut and all that jazz. So good stuff. Don't throw it away. I, I just, people don't know how to use it, do this stuff anymore. So that's step one. Step two is just basic veggies, celery, carrots, onion, super simple. Um, now if I'm like peeling carrots, I'll save the carrot peels. Um, a lot of the time with celery, People throw this away. This is the best part of the celery. <laughs> I buy celery that has the most leaves on it possible. And I used to be the person that threw this out, that thought this was trash. And I am like kicking my past self for doing that because the most flavor and almost like all of the nutrition is in these leafy greens of the celery. So don't throw these away, okay? don't really eat them. I just save them for my stock. They have a lot of flavor and they're worth every bit of freezer space to save it. Cheers. What do I do for the kids going back? Make bone broth. So anyway, 
these are the perfect little bits, okay? Just the, you know, maybe the gnarly ends or when you chop off the ends, you have those big nubs. I don't know if I say them in this one. Um, like this. You know, clean them off, get all the dirt and stuff off them, but like the nubs that you like don't really want to eat, but they're totally perfectly fine to throw in stock, save all these. Squirrel all these away, okay, in a bag, like I said, in a Ziploc baggie or Rubbermaid container. Uh, a lot of the times I'll use, let's see if I have one. Let's stand by here. Sort of like this, you know, like I have a big Ziploc one that I'll use, and then I'll just kind of pop that open and throw it in the freezer. And I'll save, again, my carrot peels, um, all my celery scraps, and I'll, you know, save those over the course of a month or two. And then once I notice that I have a good collection of both bones and veggie scraps, I'll go ahead and just throw everything in a pot. Um, if you don't have scraps saved, if you don't have carrot peels or celery or whatever, you can totally start from scratch, okay? You can start with just fine carrots. You can start with a brand new package of celery and go buy yourself a rotisserie chicken or two. So I told my mom, I said, okay, chances are not a lot of people are gonna have a stockpile of bones <laughs> in their freezer, okay? Not a lot of people are as crazy as me. <laughs> But if you want to get started and you don't want to buy $9 one half quart freaking, like I went to Earth Fair yesterday and I took pictures. I'm like, they are not selling. They are bone broth for $9 for like a quart and a half. I was like, that, what's the math on that? <laughs> That's like almost $40 for a gallon of bone broth. No, I do it for like pennies. Okay, grab yourself a rotisserie chicken, grab two, pick the meat off of it, okay? Save the meat for your family dinner. Throw in a quesadilla. I don't care what you do with the meat or after the bones. <laughs> Save with the freezer, I mean, whatever, right? If you wanna start from scratch, grab a couple of rotisserie chickens, um, some lettuce, some carrots, and some, and some um, onion, and some garlic. But like everyone has garlic, right? So, you're gonna start from scratch, that's what you do. I'm basically starting from scratch today um, with the exception of the bones because I had the bones left over from Easter dinner. But I've just been making so much bone broth I don't have enough scraps to save up. So, where did my knife? All right, found it. <laughs> um, I didn't even bother peeling these carrots. I just gave them a quick, you know, scrub. I really use, I really like this. Norwex veggie scrubber cloth. It's great because you can just scrub off all the dirt and stuff and you're good to go. Um, but anyway, I do chop off, you know, the kind of rotten squishy ends if they don't look good. So all I gotta do is just, I don't know why, I probably don't even need to do this, but it just makes me feel better. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I just, like I said, chop off any just weird looking ends or nibs that look kind of not perfect. Now these don't need to be perfect carrots. You can also be like, this is a bag that's been in my fridge for, I don't know, maybe like a month, month or two. <laughs> it's getting end of its life. Not rotten, okay? Not bad, just not super fresh. Um, so I'll just, again, I didn't even peel. I'll just give it a really quick rough chop. I've got four here. I have the I don't know what is this like the eight quart instant pot. I have no idea what this is. Um, the big one, the dish one. <laughs> and I like the instant pot because I can st stick it on slow cook and I can walk away from it. Like I don't have to worry about it for the next twelve hours. It'll sit here on the counter and it will simmer away, and it's easy for me to get about over and over again. <laughs> All right, so chop up a rough carrot, okay? I've got like, I don't know, three-ish large ones, four medium-sized-ish ones. All right, um, also obviously, you need bones. Um, these are the turkey bones, the carcass that I have saved. Um, I actually roasted this yesterday. 
Um, stuck it on a sheet pan in the oven 450 degrees for like 25 minutes until it got really nice and um, you know caramely and brown and it got like all of those really awesome flavor bits on it. It would have been fine to throw in you know unroasted um, and same thing with with a chicken if you were to get a rotisserie chicken I normally don't do that extra step. I normally just throw all the carcasses in the freezer, pull them all out and stick them in the pot. I, I don't give it that extra step, but I did this time. Bonus points if you wanna roast your bones. <laughs> and um, I just throw it in here. I think it was like four pounds. I'm doing two batches. I have another batch right here that I've already had simmering for, we're gonna say 24 hours, okay. <laughs> we're gonna definitely not say that it was like more like 48. On a side note, if you do happen to forget about your instant pot stock and you do keep resetting the slow cook function, <laughs> it'll be okay for a solid two days. I have been known to uh, have it roast and simmer for a solid 48 hours. It's fine, delicious, no problem. <laughs> Obviously I kept it at food safe temperature. I didn't ever let it turn off and cool. Um, so that's just a little side note. <laughs> if you're like me, you maybe forget about things and walk away. Uh, that's why my Instant Pot's my best friend, because it can help me out when I forget about dinner every night. Um, all right, so four pounds of bones, four-ish carrots, okay? Like I said, all of these awesome celery leaves, celery bits, anything that looks like you maybe don't want to eat it you know usually the whiter or yellowish ones on the center um look less appetizing to me okay not rocket science guys celery carrots onion garlic and a few spices i'll go over throw it in there okay most of the stuff is just leftover bits that you're saving from the trash keep all right so we got celery we have carrots um Medium onion. Very, very, very rough prep, okay? Doesn't need to be anything fancy. All I do is just pull off the papery peel and quarter it. I stick one onion in there. with me <laughs> promise making and talking in this video is seven times longer than it actually usually takes me to do this I usually have two instant pots going and then even sometimes some on the stove because I just do one big stock day and then I stick it in the freezer and you know jar it up and save it for all different kinds of things later all right so we have celery onions carrot um like I said a little bit of garlic um I don't even bother really just like get the papery bits off, you know, stick them in there. I mean, this is kind of subjective how much garlic you use. I like always double. <laughs> I love garlic. Garlic is very good for you. Um, and it can take a lot of, like a lot of pepper, a lot of garlic, um, some spices, like it really needs a lot of that flavoring because you're basically starting with water and bones and trying to infuse flavor into it. So, just use a mason jar to smash, smash it. I do have a fancy pamper chuck one that I use when I really wanna like mince it up, but when I just wanna take off the skins, I just smash it with whatever's close by. Man, I should have a cooking show, shouldn't I? supposed to be relatable. All right, I'm done with that over the peels. <laughs> peels, not really gonna matter. All right, I don't know, was that like four-ish cloves? Five-ish cloves, okay. Garlic, check. Um, the next star of the show is gonna be apple cider vinegar. And I know, it seems weird, but I promise you, you want to add this. You don't taste it at all. It adds zero flavor to the stock or broth 
however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. But what it does is it helps, the acidity helps to break down the bones and helps all of that good nutrients and minerals leach out. Um, so just like a few tablespoons. This is organic apple cider vinegar, okay? With the mother, the good stuff. You want to just splurge, get yourself a little half gallon. But I just, I put everything in these swing top jars because it just makes ease of use. So much easier. All right, a little splash of apple cider vinegar. Um, I usually put about a teaspoon-ish of, um, this is just pink Himalayan salt. You can use kosher. You can use whatever you want. I just like the pink Himalayan salt so it adds a, a variety of trace minerals. Makes the stuff bougie. <laughs> All right. And then bay leaves. Um, again, I don't think I've ever made this the same way twice. It's more or less ish type of ingredients. Three is good, whatever. I hope you're getting the hint that like this is not stuffy, it's not hard. You just throw things in a pot with water and simmer away. Um, peppercorns. Again, about a teaspoon of peppercorns. It can take a lot of pepper. Um, I don't know why I just, and black pepper is actually very good for you. So, bay leaves, salt, peppercorn, um, apple cider vinegar, carrots, onion, celery, bones. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. And then fill it up with cold water. Um, now optional, if you don't have 24 hours to simmer this or 12 hours to simmer this and you want it to be a faster cook, you're using an instant pot, use it to your advantage. Um, there have been days where I didn't have an entire day to like kind of think about this. I needed to get it done and back in the freezer. Um, and so you can pressure cook it in your pressure cooker um, for, I don't know, whatever you want. I think I did like high for maybe 20 minutes. And again, it's just to break down those bones quicker and start the leaching process. I want to know about what you dehydrate. I have the same head. Isn't, this, isn't she beautiful? Sorry, I'll come back to that in a second. I'd be distracted. <laughs> I'll go back to that in a second. I will, Nicole, I promise. I'm actually dehydrating. Okay, wait for it. Sangria bombs apparently are a thing. Saw them in the store the other day for 25 bucks and I'm like, mm, no, I am not spending $25 for a mason jar and some dehydrated fruit. If it doesn't even come with a liquor, I'm making it myself. I'll get back to that in a second. Fill it up with water, okay? I have... Well, hold on. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Stand by. I have well water, so I don't have to worry about chlorine or any of the chemicals they put in city water. If you have city water, I would recommend either filling up your Instant Pot ahead of time and letting it kind of evaporate those chemicals out kind of like you would for a fish tank you know um or buy some distilled water i just i don't know kind of excuse me on all the things they put in city water so <laughs> side note added water that's it all i do is i put it in my instant pot and depending on how much time you have you can either pressure cook it for a few minutes and then slow cook it or i usually just stick it in there and slow cook on low and let it go for 12 solid hours. I just do it, do it at night and let it cook all night. And by, you know, the next morning, it's ready for me to either take care of or <laughs> press another 12 hours in the cycle. <laughs> whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's that. That's for you, mom. Hopefully you're watching. <laughs> I'll post this video to my YouTube channel too, so that we can access it later. And you know, everyone needs to know how to make bone broth, especially when you're sick. I mean, what's better than chicken noodle soup? This is just the stock or the broth, the base for any chicken noodle soup. After you go ahead and make the broth, you can go ahead and strain it and then use that 
for so many things. You can use it for, um, just like the other night I made rice, jasmine rice, we had like Chinese, or I made like stir fry. And instead of using water, which is nutritionless, literally nutritionless, and jasmine rice, I used the bone broth instead. So I substituted way more flavor, way more nutrition, vitamins, trace minerals, all those different things into what would normally just be like plain white carbs. So it's little hacks like that that make me get things into my, you know, more nutrition into my family and they don't feel like it's a big deal. <laughs> they don't even know it half the time. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's done. This has been going for a while. Um, and it smells like freaking heaven in my house for the last 24 hours, seriously. Um, but what I do is I usually use a strainer like this, a fine mesh strainer. If you have a handheld one, that's fine too. Uh, what am I gonna pour this into? Hola. Did you get a big bowl? Okay. Um, and you ladle it out. See that okay once done this is what it will look like and I ladle it out again I have the strainer inside the bowl so it catches all the bits okay now I took out like I said three cups of this yesterday night at dinner and used it for our rice so maybe a little less than normally would but you definitely want to strain and squeeze every bit of liquid out of this because you don't want any of this to go in waste and go back into the garbage can. So. If I can get a bone here, I'll show you without burning myself. Hold on. Like, don't ever waste your turkey and bones. They are so valuable and can make out hot. Mm. Yeah, this is entertaining one more or another for you guys, trust me. I'm sure my husband would be like just shaking his head at me right now going, what are you? <laughs> He'll probably walk in while you're doing this video. He's head hockey right now. How hot. You get the picture. Okay. I'll show you what this looks like in one second. I want to see if one of these bones is cool enough to show you. Like it, lit like the bones literally crumble because all of that goodness has been just leached out. And I mean, from the from the recipe, from the ingredients, I'm sure you can tell it doesn't have a lot of flavor, like a lot of strong flavors. This is a really great base stock. And you can kind of take it whatever way you want, depending on what you're using it for. If you want to make it into like more of a chicken noodle soup type, add some thyme, add some parsley, um, add a little bit of lemon juice to freshen it up and brighten it up. You know, some, some more sea salt, um, probably. I don't salt it very heavily. I want to have an option later um, if you want to just add it to rice. I mean, like, I keep it pretty neutral and pretty plain up front, and then I can add spices later because you can never take it out once it's in there. Let's get this off break. These ones are huge. Big old leg bones. Okay. I don't know if you can see like it just they just crumble break in half. All the bones. You get the picture, right? I mean that's bone broth. That's as simple as it gets, guys. It doesn't doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't take a lot of effort. This like I said, this video takes 17 times longer than it actually takes to make the stuff. Um, and you can see you had two instant pots like me. I'm really bad at meal planning, like really, really bad at meal planning. Um, and forgetting that dinner comes every night. It's a shocker to me every single day. What? <laughs> Came again? Um, so two instant pots are great. You could also do it in a giant crock pot or a giant stock pot. I mean, there's lots of different options, but this is, uh, what it looks like. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, I guess my 
version of beauty and HGTV watch. <laughs> right? Yeah, this is not going to be, I don't think this is the television network type of cooking channel. But this is a Fuss Free Farmhouse Foods. Oh, I just think I just need to trademark that name. Bone broth, okay? Organic, turkey, free range, bone broth. I'm not wasting a drop of it. Okay, now you have your bone broth strained. Um, you can do two things. You can either stick it in the fridge and use it immediately, maybe turn it into soup or something and freeze it. Or you can freeze it as is in different increments or different size portions. Personally, I freeze it in two different ways. Um, I freeze it in either the plastic freezer quart jars. I'll show you that. Hold on. Like this. This is what I have in my freezer right now. Um, I freeze it like this and mark on the top of it how many cups it is so you don't forget. I usually do two cups, two cup chunks, because that's usually what we do our white rice in or our, our rice in or, I don't know, it's just a good serving size for us where not a lot of it goes to waste. Or you can save it in smaller ice cube trays like this. This is actually a jumbo ice cube tray. This is kind of the size of the frozen broth cube. These are half a cup. Um, I love these giant ice cube trays I got them on Amazon. It's a half a cup serving size. And this is how I try to take, take my bone broth daily. Um, I'm trying to be really good about it. Just found out I didn't have to be gluten-free, so that's super fun. Um, and trying to deal with some leaky gut issues. So, apparently bone broth is supposed to be great for healing leaky gut. This is what I'm doing. Um, they're great single size portions. If you have issues with, um, you know, bo ugh, bones or joints or anything like that, like you have arthritis pain and whatnot, um, it's great to take bone broth on a daily basis. There's tons of collagen in it. Um, and if your bone broth gels like jello, you did it right, okay? Hold on, I gotta turn off this thing on my screen. It's very distracting. All right. My phone was telling me I've been on Facebook for an hour. <laughs> anyway, um, bone broth, especially the super collagen rich stuff, is great for joint health. Um, and if you get a jello, chicken jello or turkey jello, what bones are they from? These bones are my turkey bones. Um, we actually had turkey for Easter. It's one of the turkeys we raised for Thanksgiving this year and have had in the freezer. So, this particular batch is turkey bone broth, but I do tons of chicken bone broth the same exact way. Just save the bones, put them in the freezer, and pull them out when I'm ready to do a big bone broth day. So, that's it guys. I mean, this is how I use the bone broth on a daily basis. Like I said, I also use it in a lot of different recipes. You can freeze it in little tiny ice cube trays, just your standard traditional ice cube size. And that's a great size for sticking in like dishes as you're cooking. If it's if it calls for a couple tablespoons, tablespoons of water, or you know you could take out a handful of those too. I prefer to store things in and save things in smaller increments so I can take out a handful of them if I need more, versus having to defrost. For instance, I need two tablespoons for a recipe. I don't want to defrost this whole thing, right? Because chances are it'll go bad in the freezer or fridge. So that's just a few tips and tricks, how I've learned to use it. And it feels like I am literally making money every time I make this because it would go in the trash. For most people, myself included a few years ago, all of this stuff would have been just garbage. Like I would have just thrown it out. Now that I save it, I just created something that was garbage into potentially hundreds of dollars worth of nutritious food for my family because that bone broth like I said is stupid expensive like I don't know if it's just the catchphrase now bone broth people think that they can charge ten dollars for a freaking half gallon <laughs> no <laughs> give us a try let me know if you try it message me if you have any questions um and that's it hopefully I didn't forget to say anything I mean I think that's pretty much it I do this probably once a month 
and we use it a lot. We use it for just to add and sneak a lot of nutrition into our food. All right, Nicole, you want to know about my, my dehydrator? Um, I make a lot of beef jerky in this because if you've looked at beef jerky and the ingredients on the back of the beef jerky, I'm like, why? First of all, it's really expensive. Second of all, I'm just like, why are there so many things in this? And now that I have to be gluten free, a lot of the cheaper soy sauces and teriyaki sauces and things that are used in these beef jerky recipes have gluten. <laughs> so I make my own and I actually really prefer my own because I have like a Thai style recipe that I've just kind of catered over the last few months for my husband and I. Um, I have that marinade and I'm actually going to be making some of that tomorrow. But right now I have um, some orange slices, some lemon slices. These were going bad in my fridge. My dehydrator is like my, my end of the line for most of the things in my house. So if I have a few oranges that my kids aren't going to eat or lemons that are almost bad, um, I throw them on the dehydrator and I just save them. They're great for like teas if you want to put a couple slices in tea. Like I said, I'm trying that sangria thing, which I'm super excited about. Apparently you're supposed to just be able to throw a bunch of slices of fruit in the mason jar and add some left vodka or bourbon or whatever. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> um, here's a, again, I had like one apple that was sort of, meh. My kids did not love the green apples that I purchased. So I just dehydrated a few apple slices. I have a few um, strawberries. I bought tons of strawberries. They were on sale. Whenever the organic strawberries are on sale, I buy like tons of them. Because organic strawberries are expensive and they're like, they're one of the dirtiest foods on the dirty dozen list. And my kids will eat them by the pound if I let them every single day. So when strawberries are on sale, I buy four or five packages and I usually will immediately freeze a package or two for smoothies and then I'll dehydrate a little bit. Um, these are great oatmeal, different kinds of stuff. So that's where I'm dehydrating right now. Um, you can message me, you can message me later if you want, and I can go over some of the other things um, that I use. I, I just, it's very seasonal for me. So in the summer, um, I do a ton of green powder. When the shops was shard um, and the kale and the collards and all of the greens are just in abundance and throughout the winter as well, I will dehydrate the heck out of those and powder it. And so that's what I use to make my green powder. I just do green powder because it's a combination of all of those superfoods. Um, collards, kale, and Swiss chard are three of the most nutritious foods on the planet. They are foods that my family would never eat if I did not give it to them this way. I, I, even me, I, I, I've tried kale and I will eat it via chips, like crunchy chips with like Parmesan cheese <laughs> and this way. But this way by far is how we get the most grains into our diet. We've probably 50 times over increased our greens consumption over the last year since discovering this type of hack one half of a teaspoon is equal to an entire cup of fresh kale slash one serving of fresh kale. Half a teaspoon, which is like this much. So I sprinkle that on everything, okay? I stick it in scrambled eggs. I stick it in the hamburgers. I stick it in the spaghetti sauce, in the chili. Um, anything, buffalo chicken dip, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> the buffalo chicken dip. Now I get it. Buffalo chicken dip is not a health food. But I feel a little better about it that I stuck some kale in it. Okay? And nobody's any wiser to it because it just looks like ranch dressing seasoning, right? Um, I served it to, <laughs> to some friends of mine that came over for a party. And me and Jason, we knew it was in there and we're like, watched if we would eat it. <laughs> and then like after they were all like, this is great. I'm like, it has kale in it. 
They were like, what? I was like, yeah, I just like, totally laced, laced the buffalo chicken dip with kale. But you're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. It's just like really super easy to stick the greens into, um, <laughs> into everyone's diet, whether they know it or not. So that's kind of, I know I got a little sidetracked there with the, with the greens, but that's the bone broth. That's how I, between the hundred things I just mentioned, that's how I get a lot more nutrition into our family's diet without them even necessarily knowing or feeling like things are taken away from them or shoved down their throat. Like I try to make it as seamless as possible um, so that health foods aren't a dirty word. I'm trying to kind of reteach my children that the healthy does not need to be disgusting. Healthy can be nutritious and also delicious. So that's what we're working on. But hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you try this. It's super easy. I gotta go ahead and start this pot on the Instant Pot and let it simmer overnight. I will take my strained broth. Once I strain it, I'll stick it in the fridge. I'll let it cool overnight, okay? Most of the time there's not much fat on it because I don't normally put a lot of skins in here. Um, but if I do throw like for instance, I'll say like the chicken feet or the um, the turkey legs or whatever. They have a lot of collagen in them and it took me a long time to be okay with using those in my broth. But once I kind of accepted that the chicken feet and the turkey feet weren't super gross, um, it made my chicken stock go from sort of jello to like solid jello. So a lot of good collagen in those things. But anyway, side tangent, sorry. Um, skip off any fat you have after it cools and then from there you can either put it in containers like this and freeze it or ones like this or use it and make chicken soup whatever you want to do with it it's ready to go all right friends i'm gonna go because it's late and i need to finish all of this up <laughs> see you later let me know if you have any questions bye